there's no question that when Jesus dies on the cross and pays for our sins, that out of that, everything we need for life and godliness was paid for. And in that sense, there is healing in the atonement because healing is part of God's restoration. I would look at it and say that healing has been made available to us through the cross and it's fully available. In other words, I don't have to say, God, is it your will to heal? You know, Sammy's really, really sick and the doctors say he's not gonna live. Lord, is it your will to heal? My confidence is that it is his, his desire, it is his revealed will, and it's been paid for at the cross. In that sense, healing is in the atonement. Um, in my book, Israel's Divine Healer, which is a technical book, there's more words in the end notes than in the main text itself. I, I do deal with this issue of the quotation of, of Isaiah 53 and Matthew 8. I'll, I'll try to make this succinct. Matthew 8 says, verses 16 and 17 that I quoted in the first service, that when Jesus healed the sick, it was fulfilling what's written in Isaiah 53, he carried our sicknesses. So the way you find it, say, in the MacArthur Study Bible, which has a lot of value to it, the MacArthur Study Bible would say something like, during his earthly ministry, he carried our sicknesses. On the cross, he died for our sins. Two separate things, right? Uh, so that carrying our sicknesses is not part of the cross. The problem is, Isaiah 53 the whole context is when he's dying on the cross, we thought he was suffering for our own, his own sins, but that's when he was carrying our sicknesses and pains and, pains and diseases and sins on the cross. So Matthew is basically telling us the whole ministry of Jesus right up to the cross is taking on his own shoulders, our sickness, our, our pain, until he dies on the cross for our sins. So yes, at the co- look at it like this, and this is the way I translate the Hebrew, at the cost of his wounds, there is healing for us, and that includes physical healing. So I would go to God as if it was a promise. I wouldn't just put it all on me in a stress way. I look at it as an incredible opportunity, a promise that's available, and, and uh, if I don't receive it in this world, I know I have, I have complete victory over sin in this world, but I don't live it out all the time. There are many promises. I look at that as something available, something that's promised. I want to take hold of it, but I understand we don't receive perfectly everything, all the benefits of the cross in this world.